Good morning, church. Today is the day that the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. Are we ready to worship our Lord this morning? Before that, po, let us bow our heads and come to Him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day na pwede ka namin papurihan, Lord, and for another day, Lord, that we may be blessed by you. Here we are, O Lord, your children. May you fill us up, O Lord, with your presence as we sing these songs, O Lord. Lord, may you fill our hope, O Lord, and may you change our perspective, Lord, that whatever trials we may face, Panginoon, we know, Lord, that we are safe as long as we are in you, O Lord. For truly, Lord, you are our God that never change. Yesterday, today, and forever, O Lord, you are still the same God, Lord. And we will worship you this morning, Lord, and declare that you are faithful, O Lord, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let us stand up and praise Him this morning. Let us put our hands together and worship Him. His love and Jews forever Sing praise Sing praise With a mighty hand and outstretched charm His love and Jews forever For the life that's been reborn His love and
glorified and be magnified this morning, O Lord. Patuloy po nating papurihan ang ating Panginoon. As we sing this song, may our prayer and our desire is to be with Him forever. Knowing that in Him, we are in the safest place. So let us worship Him this morning.
all the praises and glory belongs to you. A pleasant morning to everyone. Our live stream worship service will be held every Sunday at 9 o'clock in the morning through Facebook Live and YouTube. So make sure to turn on your Facebook and YouTube notifications for updates and stay tuned. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. Remember this: whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. To be able to support our church and ministries through our tithes and offerings, you can either deposit or send it via bank transfer. More details are on your screen. We encourage everyone to join our worship and prayer fellowship. That's every Friday at 6 o'clock in the evening via Zoom. The link will be sent on our group page. For prayer requests, please don't be hesitant to send it privately to Sister Lei del Rosario or to our pastors and volunteers. We believe life groups are the most efficient way we can connect together in church, grow together in applying the weekly sermon, and mobilize together. Life groups will still continue every Sunday after worship service as we face the new normal via video chat or Zoom depending on your group preference. So make sure you stay in touch with your life group. We have multiple discipleship group opportunities to grow deeper in our faith and experience fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Join one now by simply sending a message to our coordinators and more details are shown on the screen. Matthew chapter 19 verse 14 says, Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Encouraging every parent to assist their little ones for their online Sunday school as a great opportunity for kids to play games, meet with their friends, and learn more about God. And that is all for our announcements. For sure you have prepared your heart and mind to listen to the word of the Lord today. Please stay tuned for our Sunday message by Pastor Dante Poliescas. For the reading of his word, may I ask everyone to please open your Bibles to Psalms chapter 84 verses 1 to 12. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God 
than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. To God be the glory for the reading of his word. Good morning. Uh, it's Sunday again and I hope that everybody is in uh, good health, that you're excited. Nandito ulit tayo ngayon to worship the Lord and to hear from Him and to hear from His message and to be nourished spiritually. And uh, of course, na yung ating hunger ay ma-fill in uh, ng mga salita ng Panginoon. And uh, today will be a, a very exciting day again. Kasi I'm sure that the Lord is, has something for all of us na meron siyang gagawin sa umagang ito para sa lahat sa atin. And uh, last Sunday, uh, last Sunday ng February, uh, nagbigay ng message sa atin si Pastor. And uh, the title of that message was Passion for God and Compassion for People. At naalala ko na ng last Sunday message nung January was entitled, Loving Christ Will Make Us Love Others. At napagtanto ko na to be connected with others, we have to be connected with God. So, to be passionate with people, we have to be first uh, be passionate uh, about God. So, ito yung ating pag-uusapan sa umagang ito about our passion for God. Meron pong apat na katanungan. There are four questions na atin pong sasagutin sa umagang ito sa pamamagitan ng salita ng mga Panginoon. And the first question goes like this. How passionate are you for God? How passionate are you for God? How passionate uh, are we for God? Okay? So, are we passionate just like Jonathan Edwards when he wrote these uh, uh, words and I quote when he said, when he wrote na, God's purpose for my life is that I have a passion for God's glory and that I have a passion for my joy in that glory and that these two are one passion. So, wow, ganito ka-passion si Jonathan Edwards at alam natin na si Jonathan Edwards is isang kilalang uh, manggagawa no, sa Panginoon. And this morning, I will have a temporary break muna sa ating series about loving people. But the message this morning that will come from the Word of God will still be related to our topic about loving God and loving people before we go to uh, the Make Disciples series. Uh, and yung ating topic for this morning, I entitled it DSD. So I would like you to prepare your pens and your notebooks so that uh, you can write down and jot down kung ano ba ang meaning ng mga salitang o ng mga letters na to, DSD. The message this morning will be taken from the uh, Book of Psalms, which has just read a while for us, uh, chapter 84, verses 1 to 12. Okay? So... Meron tayong apat na katanungan. Yung is, ang unang katanungan is that how passionate are we for God? So, ito yung ating uh, dapat itanong sa ating mga sarili. Kasi naalala ko lang some 8 years or 10 years ago na merong leadership uh, training na ibinigay sa atin sa church na ang unang-unang core value doon is intimacy with God. Now, intimacy with God, uh, we will not be that intimate with God if we will not passionate with God. Parang hindi tayo magiging passionate with our or intimate with our better half, yung ating mga spouses or sa ating mga anak, if we're not passionate with them. So, connected, konektado lahat. So, that's why this morning, ito yung ating pag-aaralan at uh, hihimay-himayin sa pamamagitan ng mga salita ng Panginoon na nakasulat doon sa Psalms 84 verses 1 to 12. But before that, let us come into prayer and let's ask God for His... Uh, uh, understanding and His grace that He will provide uh, for us an understanding this morning. So let us all pray. Let's bow down our heads and close our eyes. Aming Panginoon, maraming salamat for this opportunity again and for this privilege, Lord, that we can worship You freely uh, for giving us this freedom, Father, to gather together on a Sunday uh, para sumamba sa inyo. We acknowledge, Father, na hindi lahat ay merong ganitong klaseng privilegio. Not Everybody, Lord, has the freedom to worship you. There are still many parts in the world, Father, that they are worshiping in an underground churches or underground worship halls, Father, upang hindi sila makita ng mga authorities. 
But here, Lord, in our country, here in our place, you have given us, Lord, this privilege, this freedom, O Lord, to worship you freely, to exercise, Lord, our faith and to hear from you. So that's why, Lord, sa umagang ito, we ask, Lord, for your blessing. We ask, Lord, that you will uh, let us understand, Lord, so ano man ang inyong uh, mensahe para sa amin. But we know, O Lord, that you have something in store for us, O Lord, that is uh, something, Lord, that we can use in our journey, Lord, in this life we call the Christian journey. So, Lord, just be with us. And as we sit down, Lord, at your feet this morning, Father, talk to us. We, as your servants, Lord, will listen to you intently and will give back to you, Lord. We'll give to you, Lord, our utmost attention, Father, and focus. So, here we are. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. So, DST. So, yung unang katanungan ay naitanong na sa atin. At mamaya, matasagot natin yan. Tayo ay masasagot natin yan bawat isa sa atin kung gaano ba tayo kapassionate para sa Panginoon. Now, ang pangalawang katanungan, but this is the first point that we're going to, you know, be uh, uh, to connect no doon sa mga na, nabasa na, at narinig natin na binasa kanina mga salita ng Panginoon sa Psalms 84 verses uh, 1 to 12. So, first one. Do I delight in the Lord? Do you delight in the Lord? So, while I was studying this um, uh, passage, uh, Psalm 84, itong chapter na to, uh, may kita ko rito kung gaano ka-passionate yung sumulat ng sal- salmo na ito. Because uh, in the, verse, the first verse, uh, first four verses ng, ng Psalm na ito, ay ito yung nakasabi. Verse 1, it says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Now, pagkaganitong klaseng description, may kita natin dito kung gaano ka desirous yung, yung salmista to come before the temple of God. And here, um, it seems that he or the psalmist is very excited and he's very eager to go to the temple because he's describing the temple as a lovely temple, as a beautiful temple, something na uh, he will always desire to come at pumunta doon, okay? To be with the Lord. Kaya sabi nga niya, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, merong longing. Okay? Sabi niya, and even I'm, you know, even faints for the courts of the Lord. Uh, parang, Pag nandun, para siyang mahihimatay sa ganda. So that's how excited uh, he is to go to the temple of the Lord. You see, he is describing the temple of the Lord as a lovely temple. Uh, in fact, in verse 2, it's not just a lovely temple, but it is a temple that is loved by all. Notice ang sinabi niya, My soul yearns and even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. So, it is love. Hindi lang siya ang, ang nagmamahal sa templong ito. Hindi lang siya ang nagmamahal or merong desire to, to be there in the, in, the, in the temple. But in verse 3, it says, Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty. My King and my God. So now, after he describes the loveliness of the temple, now he describes it that it is loved by all. Mahal ng karamihan or mahal ng lahat ang templo ng Panginoon. So, you see how delighted the psalmist is to be with the Lord in His temple. Because it is loved by all. It is not just lovely, but it is loved by all. And it is not just loved by all, it is just lovely, but it is also a safe haven. Tingnan natin, balikan natin yung verse 3. Even the sparrow has found a home. Okay? And the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Alam natin na there is no safest place on earth kundi yung ating home. Remember, yung ating uh, second Sunday message about you know the Christian home where love is nurtured 
and develop. Yeah, sa bahay, sa ating pamamahay, it is the safest haven, it's the safest place that we could go. So that's why no, no matter how we run away from home, babalik at babalik pa rin tayo. Okay? Uh, isang magandang ihemplo at example dyan is yung prodigal son. Of course, no, it was us sinners that will go back to the father. But it also speaks about the home na namimiss niya. Right? Because there's no safest place on earth but our home. So here it is it is described that even the birds the the sparrow the swallow they had a place for them to nest they have found a place to nest see it is a safe haven and verse 4 said blessed are those who dwell in your house they are ever praising you it is where the glory of god dwells at dini describe to ng salmista probably he remembered kung ano yung nangyari when Solomon dedicated the temple at ang mga katagang at ang dedikasyon na tulo, uh, mga kapatid ay mababasa natin sa 1 Kings chapter 8 and the chapter 5 of 2 Chronicles. Dito may kita natin yung the most one of the most powerful prayer that was written and recorded in the Bible, the prayer of dedication of of Solomon. And dito mga kapatid naalala ng salmista ko ano ang nangyari doon sa dedication na yun because in verses 10 to 12 of 1 Kings chapter 8 1 Kings chapter 8 it, this is what it is written and what is said when the priest withdraw from withdrew from the holy place the cloud filled the temple of the Lord and verse 11 says and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled His temple. You see, kaya ang sabi niya, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you because it is where the glory of God dwells. But, alam natin na sa chapter 7 na Acts verses 48, ito yung nakasaad at nakasulat doon. However, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands. Oh. So, ang ibig sabihin nito mga kapatid, na we can worship God anytime and anywhere. Right? He he deserves our worship anytime, uh, anywhere. But of course, we revere places na we dedicated to God. So that's why meron tayong merong temple. In, that, in the case of the Jews, merong mga temple. Mga Hebrews, meron silang temple. And in our case, meron tayong ABCC building which we are currently right now renovating. And it's really exciting na matapos. No? And this week, uh, matatapos. Itong araw na to, matatapos yung uh, ang paggawa. And probably, mga kakaunting mga ayusin na lang for the following week, itong darating na, na linggo. But, we can worship God anywhere and anytime. But of course, we, we revere yung places na we dedicated to the Lord. Just like how the Hebrews or the Jews uh, revere the place. Uh, yung kung saan nandun yung temple. And right now, uh, they still go to that uh, remnant na sinasabi nilang wailing wall. And they go there because they know na ito yung place kung saan nandun yung glory ng Panginoon. The glory of the Lord went down and you know when it was dedicated. It, you know, and tayo, we need a structured worship and because it is very, very important. Okay? Now, ang dapat na meron tayo mga kapatid, right, is, you know, a devoted heart. Okay? A devoted heart with great spiritual hunger and longing to be nourished. Actually, ito yung nasa puso ng salmista. His delight you know, to be with the Lord and to be in His temple. His longing to be there, to be with the Lord, to worship Him. And I like what this verse in, in a song, verse in a song based on Psalm 42, verse 1 to 4, that says, As the deer panteth for water, so my soul longeth after thee. You are all that my heart desire, and I long to worship you. You see, this is the longing of that heart of a, someone who delights in God. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself mentioned in His Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. 
righteousness. We can hear righteousness. We can receive righteousness of the Lord when we hear His words, when we gather together in worship. Okay? So, una o pangalawang question na ibinigay sa atin, do we delight in the Lord? Do we delight in God? Do we, uh, do I delight in the Lord? Second, or the third question, or the second point in, in, in this uh, verse or this passage that we, are, we have just uh, read is, where does my strength comes from? Saan ba nanggagaling yung ating kalakasan? Verses 5 to 8. Saan ba nanggagaling yung ating uh, kalakasan? Is it because of our natural tendency to survive in, in, uh, in, in times of crisis? Or there is a source of the strength? Now, let's see and i-unpack natin isa-isa. Verse 5, it says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage as they pass through the valley of Baca. Wow. Here, the psalmist describes that life is a perilous journey. Na challenging no, yung ating journey in our Christian life. Um, Sabi nga, uh, hindi, uh, hindi siya smooth sailing, right? Uh, this will always be challenges because this life is a perilous journey. Now, may kita natin dito mga kapatid na it is being described here na yung kalakasan ng mga nag-journey ay manggagaling sa Panginoon. Now, yung journey na is described here sa pilgrimage because Siguro yung salmista was in a far place na nandun sa kanyang bamahay, pamamahay, and he was thinking of a pilgrimage coming, going over to the temple of the Lord. At nakikita nito ngayon yung kanyang pagpunta doon na nangilangan siya ng kalakasan na nagagaling sa Panginoon because the journey going there will be perilous, will be hindi, hindi madali. Right? So that's why doon sa unang portion ng verse 6, it says, They pass through the valley of Baca. Now, yung valley of Baca is not this, you know, it's not explained in the scriptures, but we know that we will know that yung word na Baca comes from uh, from a, a tree, a balsam tree, na yung kanyang dagta ay pag umaagos parang luha, right? It's weeping, uh, parang it's painful because Ang describe, description dito of valley of Baca is that it's not that easy. You will weep. There will be pain. There will be challenges. There will be struggle. Pero the strength comes from the Lord. Okay? Life is perilous is describing here that everyone will pass through the valley of Baca where weeping and pain is there. Wow! But, tingnan natin yung pangalawang uh, portion ng verse 6. They may they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. May challenges during the journey, pero he's describing here na as they pass through the valley of Baca, they leave a blessing there. So in our struggles, the sa pamamuhay pala natin, that there we can always give blessing to others, and it's a blessing so that we can give we can bless others. Because here, even if the journey is perilous, they leave a blessing. Yung sabi nga rito, a place of springs. Parang, niririk, parang uh, uh, he is describing what uh, Abraham did when Abraham left that, 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 that town, uh, yung kanilang lugar doon sa Chaldeans of Ur to go to the promised land. And then alam natin doon na merong uh, the, the wilderness, but they dig a well doon. And even si, si Moses, right? So, they leave a blessing in our lives. There will be testings. There will be, there will be struggles. There will be pain. And, but, in these struggles that we have in life, we can leave blessings pala. Now, me and my wife, my wife can, uh, can testify to that. Many, many years ago, about 30 years ago, my wife was... Alam nyo to, story namin dalawa, that she was uh, diagnosed with a, with a cancer, a terminal cancer. Pero 
many years after and until now, nandito pa ang aking asawa and then the grace of God was there. Did you know that the struggles that we encountered and we experienced during those days and during those years is a blessing to many today. So you see, we can live a blessing out of the experiences that we have in our journey, in our Christian journey because there will always be struggles, right? But the strength, where, that, where does the strength comes from? You see, verse 7 says, They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion, telling us that true pilgrims or true Christians who are going through uh, struggles in their, in their lives, in their Christian journey, takes one step at a time and takes no shortcuts. Walang shortcut. No, in, in, in our journey, hindi ka pwedeng mag-shortcut. Merong mga gum- karamihan sa gumagawa ng shortcut when in the, in the journey ay talagang nadidetour at yung detour na yun ay hindi na nakakabalik doon sa tamang daan. That's why, ang sabi ito, they go from strength to strength. So, step by step, as we continue with our journey, ito ngayon yung hinaharap natin, merong step para dyan. There will always be solutions for that. So, strength to strength, right? Hindi siya shortcut, hindi pwedeng mag-shortcut. So, that's why true pilgrims takes one step at a time and takes no shortcuts. So, alam ko na bawat isa sa atin ngayon ay merong mga pinagdadaanan. There are people who are struck by sicknesses or merong people that there's that threat of sickness. That's part of the journey right now. But let's take one step at a time. Strength to strength, strength by strength, step by step because yung strength natin saan nga ba nanggagaling. So that's why pagdating dito sa verse 8, notice here, the psalmist says, Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. You see, we depend upon God for sustenance. Yung ating journey, yung ating mga pinagdadaanan ngayon, the question that says, where does, where does my strength comes from? Verse 8 answers that. Hear my prayer, Lord Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Our strength comes from Him. And He will sustain us. He will sustain us. So there is that prayer of sustenance Don't sa verse 8. It depends, we depends, it depends upon God for sustenance. Kaya, Sa verse 5 pa lang, sabi niya, Blessed are those whose strength is in you. So kung yung pinagkukunan natin ng kalakasan ay ang Panginoon, blessed tayo ng mga kapatid. So whatever struggles and pain and trials and testings you have right now, blessed are you if you're getting the strength from God. We are, you are blessed. So as you pass, on, pass through, that valley of baka, that valley of weeping and pain, you can leave a blessing there for others to see. Oh, for them to be able to know and to learn. Ganito lang pala ang pagdaan dyan. Right? So, last question. Last question, mga kapatid. Whom do I trust? Verses 9 to 12. Now, verse 9, after, after that, he prayed for sustenance in verse 8. Yung, first, yung verse 9, he followed it up with another prayer. Sabi niya, look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Now, he was the shield here. He was describing the king. He was praying for the king. Uh, it is not described here kung sino yung king reigning during that time. But ang sinasabi niya rito, Lord, protect our king. Look on our king. He is our shield. Give him favor, Lord, on your anointed one. Of course, the, the psalmist says, sir, na i-protect yung king because he knows that that king where the Lord Jesus come, the Lord Jesus Christ will come. So, kailangan proteksyonan yung king. And how is it right now in our lives? In our journey, we should not forget to pray for the authorities or authorize yung, yung, yung meron mga authority na yung mga meron mga authority sa atin yung ating go- go- government we have to pray for them irregardless kung sino yung mga nandyan because sabi nga rito look on our shield they are our leaders 
So, isiningit yan dito mga kapatid. Hindi lang isiningit, but there is a purpose. Because in our journey, sometimes we forget to pray for the authorities. We forget forget to pray for, you know, for the people that governs us, that that rules us. It's very important that we have to pray for them. So, yun yung nakalagay doon sa verse 9. And it's very interesting na yung Psalm 84, yung subscription nito, nakalagay doon, for the director of for the director of music according to Jitith of the sons of Korah Asam. Now, alam natin mga kapatid na si Korah together with um Dathan and Abiram, they rebelled against God and Moses. It is recorded in number 16. You see mga kapatid, all of their families died in that instance. Uh, you can read that, that account in number 16 when they rebelled, rebelled against God and Moses dahil parang ayaw nila sa leadership ni Moses. Si Korah, who is a Levite, was given this, uh, this opportunity to serve the Lord. Ay nagsiselos sa ruling ni Moses. And then he rebelled together with Dathan, Dathan and Abraham. And you know what happened to them. They were swallowed by the earth. They were swallowed by, you know, nilamon sila ng lupa na buhay. But there were survivors. Very clear dito na merong mga anak or mga mga apo or mga kaanakan ni Cora na na hindi nasama doon for that for that uh, for that incident. So, alam nila kung gaano ka importante to pray for the authorities. Kaya sabi niya rito sa verse 9, as we continue with our journey, look on our shield, O God, look in, with Look with favor on your anointed one. So, very important para sa atin mga kapatid to pray for the governing bodies, to pray for authorities. Our Bible, the scriptures is very clear about that. So, irregardless kung pula or blue or white, dilaw, whatever nandyan, don't forget to pray para sa ating mga, mga uh, leaders, government leaders. Now, here's what the interesting part comes. Verse 10, it says, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Better daw ang one day sa simbahan, sa templo, than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a door, doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. He would rather be there as a doorkeeper nandun rather than be somewhere else. Now, it's very interesting na yung uh, the other version ng translation in the Message Bible in verse 10 of chapter 84 of Psalms, it says, One day spent in your house, this beautiful place, beautiful place of worship, beats thousands spent on Greek island beaches. I'd rather scrub floors in the house of my God than be honored as a guest in the palace, in the palace of sin. It's better now to be in the house of the Lord than to be in the beach. You see, one day spent in your house beats a thousand days spent in beaches. What does that mean? It's better to be in the house of the Lord. Ang ibig sabihin dito mga kapatid, yung one day na sinasabi rito is the Lord's day. Okay? You see, He is expecting us every Sunday. Ito dito sa scripture is one day. Pero ang required lang sa atin every week is just one hour to worship corporately and to be with the Lord. Pwedeng sabihin natin dito, one hour spent in your house, this beautiful place of worship beats an eight hour spent in beaches. So Sunday mga kapatid, one hour lang ang nire-require sa atin to be to worship God because He is expecting us every Sunday to sit down and to hear from Him. And it is a day that is set aside for Him. Para sa Panginoon yun, isang oras lang ang inihingi niya sa atin. A day where everybody gathered together to worship. Kasi, yeah, we can worship the Lord anywhere we want, anytime we want, on our own. But the Bible also says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren, just like what others are doing. Wag natin info for sake because this is where we get strength from each one. You see nga, sabi nga sa isang kataga, there is un in union there is strength. So yung pag-iisa, pagkakaisa natin, when we are united in worship, there is strength in there. So the Lord's Day, ang ibig sabihin dito mga kapatid, yung one day is the Lord's Day. Sa time natin ngayon, 
One hour lang. An hour for the Lord. Kaya huwag nating huwag nating uh, pabayaan yun. You see, right now, many people refuse to go to church. Church. They've got so many reasons. Complain and say, church is boring. And the songs that they sing, that they are singing there are unfamiliar. Sermons are long, dull, and uninspiring. Sana yung mga sermons na naririnig natin dito every Sunday ay hindi mahaba or hindi siya dull at hindi siya uninspiring. Sana every time na naririnig ninyo itong mga mensahe na naririnig natin every Sunday, you're inspired. And some of them, they don't go to church because people aren't friendly. They don't worship because people aren't friendly. Prayers are long and meaningless. Ngayon, online yung worship natin. But I seldom see right now greeting each one doon sa mga chat box ng ating online worship. Let's use that. Let's use technology to say hi and say, Kumusta ka na mga kapatid? Kumusta ka kapatid? Kumusta ka pastor? Okay, kumusta ka brother Dante? Right one. You see, but there are other people that they enjoy coming to church. Why? Because for them, church is exciting. Worship is exciting. The songs, no matter how unfamiliar it is, it's uplifting, right? The sermons are inspiring, no matter how boring it is, it inspires them because it's the word of the Lord. The prayers bring them closer to God and the people are friendly and inviting. Mga kapatid, we worship the Lord. We don't go to church. We don't sit down to listen to a person. We, there, we are there to worship, to listen to God. So it, it's not boring, it's not uninspiring because what is being uh, discussed and what is being delivered there comes from the Word of the Lord. So this, ano ba ang diferensya ng dalawa? These people that are refusing to go to church and for these people that enjoys going to worship. One word, motivation. These people that enjoys going to worship services are spiritually hungry. And they know that coming to church or coming to worship, they will be spiritually filled. Right? And the desire to be nourished, their desire, that longing, just like what the psalmist says, that my heart faints in thinking about your courts, O God, because he knows that there he will be fed, he will be nourished. Ah, buong linggo na walang pagkain. Sigurado ako mga kapatid, yung physical na pagkain, hindi tayo kakain sa buong linggo ng physical na pagkain. Then kakain lang tayo ng Sunday, one hour pala, one hour lang din ang kain doon. It's not sustainable. It's also the same in our spiritual life, our spiritual lives. That we feed each one and then we feast on a Sunday. Sabi nga, it's just like a cake. Sabi nga ni Pastor Mel, it's just like a cake. We prepare the dough. We bake the cake the whole week. And when we come to church for worship and we come to Worship on a Sunday, we put the icing on the cake and let's, let's eat it. It makes us complete, okay? To worship God and to have that fellowship. That's one word, motivation. So that's why, mga kapatid, let us not take for granted the privilege of worshiping God. Huwag natin tong it take for granted. Just like what my prayer said, that we thank God for the freedom that we have right now to worship Him. Because this privilege, this freedom that was given to us, is paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ in His death on a cross. It made, it made, us, it made it possible for us to worship the Lord anywhere, anytime we are. Because when the moment that He died in that 3 o'clock, in that Friday afternoon, that veil in the temple, that big curtain that separates from the separates the sanctuary to the holies of holies was opened up signaling that we can go to God anytime we can pray to him anytime and you can worship to him and it cost him his life so wag natin it take for granted mga kapatid yung privilege at yung freedom na ibinigay sa atin dito you see verse 11 says very clearly for the lord god is a sun and shield so for the question now, where does your trust comes from? Who do we trust? Who do I trust? The Salvation says in verse 11, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. Pwede ba yun? Mainit na nga tapos may shield? Ah, that's the mystery of our the God that we serve. He is the sun that gives us warmth. He is the sun that gives us light. 
and He is the one who shields us from the harm of the sun. You see, the Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does He withhold from those whose walk is blameless. This is the new, this is the Old Testament version of that. In yung trabaho natin as is recorded or is written in, in somewhere in 1 Corinthians that our work and our service to the Lord is not in vain. Right? So for the Lord God is a sun and shield, the Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does He withhold from those whose walk is blameless. And verse 12, Lord Almighty, He said, Blessed is the one who trusts in you. Mga kapatid, our passion for God will make us passionate to care and to love and value others. Now, we'll be celebrating a communion after this message. May it be that we you know, start to pray right now for our loved ones, right? And to pray also for ourselves. Do we delight in the Lord? Where does our strength comes from? Do I delight in the Lord? Where does my strength comes from? A question that we should answer. And whom do I trust? Whom do we trust? So as we prepare ourselves for the communion afterwards, mga kapatid, let us ask ourselves and know how passionate are we with God. Do we long for Him? Do we desire Him? Do we long for His words? Do we long for His message? Do we long to be with Him? This is how passion for God is being described in the scripture. Let us all pray. Lord, salamat sa inyong mensahe. Salamat, Lord, sa inyong uh, reminder na ang buhay, Lord, namin as we continue on with our Christian journey, it will not be easy. It, there will always be trials. There will always be testings. There will always be pain. There will always be weeping. But Lord, you have reminded us na as we weep, and as we are being pained, Father, we can still give blessing to others out from our own experience. So, mga kapatid, uh, this is our prayer this morning that we thank God for His reminders, that we thank God for His blessings, that we thank God for everything that He has given us because our trust is on Him and our strength comes from Him. This is our prayer. Thank you very much, O Lord, for your message and for your words. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The communion will follow after that will be led by Pastor Mel. Be blessed, mga kapatid. I invite everyone of you this morning to celebrate with me the Holy Communion. I trust that your bread and the cup are ready. Uh, hindi lang po dahil tayo ay uh, inutusan ng Panginoon na gagawin ito as often as we do it. Ngunit, uh, uh, we should remember the spiritual benefit that we will also experience. So, bago tayo uh, kumain at uminom sa kopang to, uh, meron po tayong maikling paalaala. Remember, communion po is an occasion of recommitment of oneself to the Lord. Commitment ng ating buhay sa Panginoon. Recommitment. Okay? Uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren, to present your body as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Pangalawa po, self-examination. The Bible says, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. So, alam natin na Dalawang ordinances or sacraments ang, ang binigay sa church to be observed. Una yung baptism, which is uh, our uh, identification with Christ's death and resurrection. Okay? At yung ating resolve to be faithful to Christ and also to His church. Yung pangalawa po, itong Lord's Supper or communion. Ito po ay proclamation ng kanyang ministry, yung kanyang ginawa, yung nasa lupa pa siya, 
His death and His resurrection at yung kanyang pagbalik sa langit. Okay? And His second coming. Uh, pinuproclaim natin yan. So, today, pinahayag natin na ang ating Panginoon Jesus ay babalik muli upang tayo ay kanyang i-reward, kukunin, for where He is, there we will be also. So, while waiting for that day, uh, we are encouraged to be faithful to Him and to His church because He has given the church the authority and also the power to do what He has commissioned us to do. In communion, we are experiencing His presence. We, we are experiencing His power. He is present in us and with us, and He is available. So, mga kapatid, this morning is an opportunity na dadalhin natin sa Kanya ang ating mga problema, ang ating mga karamdaman. Remember, He is uh, our uh, our healer, our Jehovah Shalom, our peace, Jehovah Rapha, our, uh, yes, our healer, and our Jehovah Jireh. God is uh, the Lord of our life. And through the person of Jesus Christ, we come to know who God is. Nagsimbolo po ang communion ito of the unity of the believers and also yung ating love and concern for each other. So napakalaga po na tayo ay mag-participate sa communion dahil itong mga spiritual benefits na binibigay sa atin. Handa na ba tayo sa ating communion? So take the bread with you. Itong tinapay po ay simbolo ng kanyang katawan that was broken for us. Yung kanyang katawan sa krus ay binigay niya bilang sakripisyo para sa ating mga kasananan na meron tayong buhay na walang hanggan. For I received from the Lord that I also pass unto you. The Lord Jesus on the night He was betray betrayed took bread and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake the bread together. The cup. Ito po simbolo ng kanyang dugo that was shed for, for you and for me. For without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. In like manner, he also took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As you, often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake the cup together. Heavenly Father, we declare all the works of Jesus Christ, including and especially His death on the cross, to accomplish our salvation for us, so that we will not suffer uh, in eternity for all our unrighteousness and sins. Thank you for the blessed hope that we have, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that this morning. Yan pa noon ang aming pag-asa. The world offers us temporary hope, but Jesus offers us eternal hope. When He comes again, He will take us unto Himself, for where He is, there we will be also. Before our worship will end, just a couple reminders. Uh, mga kababaihan, I was informed na mag-uumpisa ng inyong uh, session for the FOH. No, uh, Those who have registered, uh, get in touch with Pastor Agnes or to your leaders and to my wife, Gina, and how uh, I think it will start today. Uh, mamayang hapon, oh, and mga two hours, I think it will start today, uh, month of March, first Sunday of March. And... Uh, uh, just get in touch with them. And then, yung ating project, uh, malapit na pong matapos. Uh, I think it will be completed today. Uh, meron lang masiguro mga finishing touches na gagawin for this whole week. And then, for the second Sunday of March, we'll have a brand new facade. And as we 
you know, we record our uh, praise and worship and we do our and everything there, uh, I'm sure it will be very, very nice. Maganda lang sanang tuloy-tuloy na lahat. But of course, we have to pray for, I mean, tuloy-tuloy ng ayusin, including yung ating ceiling. But it needs uh, uh, much uh, much budget pa kailangan natin. But let's pray for that. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. So that, you know, meron tayong excitement na pagdating ng panahon that we can go back, you know, to the church for a face-to-face worship, we'll have a brand new looking, you know, uh, worship hall na it's not just we go there to be excited because bago, but of course, na it's dedicated to the Lord. So, just like what the psalmist, psalmist says, he's excited to be there. So, ganun yung gagawin natin. So, while meron tayong opportunity to repair and refurbish, gawin na natin. Of course, uh, uh, we thank for do- we thank you yung lahat na sumuporta and yung patuloy na sumusuporta at patuloy na magsusuporta pa rin. Hindi natin dapat ililimit ang ating Panginoon who's the source of everything. Amen? So maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. May the God of peace Himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As we go this morning, remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. So let us be salt of the earth and light of the world. Maging pagpapala po yung ating buhay sa ating kapwa sa araw na to at sa araw-araw po. At mag-iingat tayo lagi at iingatan din po tayo ng Panginoon. Amen and Amen. Our worship service has already ended. Mga kapatid, let's look forward for another fruitful week, another blessed week. Let us not forget, we are sent in every situation and every circumstance. God bless po sa inyong lahat. Stay safe, stay healthy. Let's see each other again next Sunday. Good morning.
Just save you.